I want to be a storyteller because I realize that that other people's stories are more important than my own and that I really after hearing a story, I don't want to keep it secret and keep it to myself and lock it up. I want to be that person that can, you know, maybe take a shy person's story or a person who doesn't have as much reach as I do and share it because really people's stories are how you're going to learn. So my piece is about um, a girl named Taylor Dick and she is a student actually at WKU and she has this amazing talent that she's a baker. And she's not just that average, I make a cake kind of baker, but she makes a piece of art with what she does. She can, all of a sudden you'll sit there and be like, oh, this is a sculpture. You do sculpting? No, she actually, she sculpts with cakes and she will make anything from, um, you know, gorgeous cakes that look like Tiffany boxes to a cake that looks like Hulk is shoving his way out of it. And uh, she even did me the honor, she's actually a very dear friend of mine, of making a cake for my birthday that was Frozen theme. And it was just, the coolest cake I could ever see. And I think the important part to take away from the piece that I did is that not only is there an importance of getting involved in your craft and what you do, but that education should always be a number one step. Not only um, Taylor's story, but my own, we're both doing these fantastic things right now where we are, and we're both gonna walk away from this situation with a degree from WKU. And without that degree, I don't think we could grow and blossom to be great. Every occasion that goes on, like it's not a party if you don't have a cake, that's my philosophy. I was 14 years old at home over the summer and had been watching a lot of TLC and Cake Boss. And I was just really, really impressed by how they could do such life-like things, but it was edible. So I think that's what sparked my interest in cake baking. The first cake I ever baked was just a really simple square cake and I had fondant over it and it was like a Thanksgiving themed cake <laughs> because that's the only stamps I had at home, like cookie cutouts, and so I cut out the fondant and just made it Thanksgiving theme. Fondant typically is like a gelatin mixture. It's gonna be like a hardened form of icing, almost like a dough, but personally, taste is a lot more important, so I just use marshmallow and powdered sugar together, and that's it. When it comes to the cake baking process, I think my strongest talent is probably just conceptualizing the idea. And a lot of people come to me for birthday cakes and they want all these different things on them because that's like what the person likes. And so the hard part is to try to find a way to put them all on the cake and make it cohesive. Everybody says they put love into their cooking, but that's honestly a big deal is just making sure that you're really putting in the effort to personalize the cake for each individual client. And taste is definitely important, so when you've got the taste down, that can be the difference between a good cake and a great cake. Over the years, I've baked a lot of different cakes, um, wedding cakes and prom cakes. They're usually different tiers, just white fondant with whatever piping the theme might be for that. I do a lot of birthday cakes as well, like Mickey Mouse theme or Hulk whatever it may be. I also went to New York during high school and went to the Tiffany & Co. jewelry store and it was just amazing. So I came back and made like a Tiffany box cake. So I get my inspiration a lot from just what's going on around me. When you first start to bake a cake, you're gonna wanna do all the cake baking itself because each tier of a cake has two to three different layers of cake. So the first step is to just get all that baked and have those cakes leveled out. And then I usually go from there and do the icing. And so I let my cakes chill while I'm making my icing and then you can start assembling the different layers. And after that, um, if you wanna do buttercream or fondant and whatever creative stuff you wanna do, there are so many different tools that I use to bake with. Um, a lot of the tools are really to help me decorate with fondant and cut the fondant and make it look really precise. When you're decorating a cake, in order to get it as perfect as you possibly can, you have to start out with a level cake. 
And so all the different layers of your cake have to be leveled off and then the buttercream has to be incredibly smooth. One of my favorite tools though is I've got this little saw and it helps to level the cakes and you can choose how high you want it. And so it really takes all the, the guesswork out of it and just completely levels your cake off. Every time I bake a cake, there's a new challenge. You think that you've solved the challenge the last time and that this one will go perfectly smoothly, but it's never like that. There's always a new challenge or, you know, having different cracks and mess ups with a cake. That's something I'm like striving to do better at is just to perfect the art. I've had a lot of experience repairing cracked cakes since I started so young and it's just been a self-taught thing. So buttercream icing is your friend. It's like a glue, but it's edible. So if the cake crack is not that bad, you can always repair a cake crack with buttercream icing. So a good tip would be to always crumb coat your cakes and that just seals in all the crumbs and cracks and then go on with another layer of buttercream or fondant after that. When I bake, I do a lot of it by myself, but my mom has always been like my biggest supporter, so she is always there to help clean up. And that's definitely my least favorite part of the cake baking process is doing all the dishes. And she was such a big help in helping me with those things. Once I finish business school, I would love to go to culinary school and then pursue having my own cake baking shop. So that would be my biggest dream. Professional pastry artists often price their cakes based off of a per slice amount. So they may charge like three to six dollars per slice. But right now, since I'm an amateur, I just try to price it off based how much work I'm gonna be putting into it. On average, I would say a two tiered cake probably takes between 10 and 16 hours. It's really extensive when you have to think about all the details that go into the fondant work and the buttercream work. Um, but smaller cakes obviously take a lot less time. I would love to be able to incorporate chocolate into my cakes and that's something when I go to pastry school, people are so artistic and do amazing things with chocolate and that's something I would really love to learn how to do. For my most recent cake, the bottom tier, I did a lot of piping work on it. And for that one, um, you just pipe dots up the side of it and then spread it out with like a butter knife or something. And so it creates a really cool textured buttercream look. And the top tier is covered in fondant and it's really intricate. When baking a cake, I think what makes it special is just the fact that it's personalized and the client comes to me with somewhat of an idea and then I just span off from that. And so, you know, based off the personalities of the client, I try to just really personalize the cake for them. Thank you.